Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the Runcam Link Wasp which is kind of similar to the Runcam Phoenix, Runcam Link Phoenix that I reviewed a little while ago. It's the same small style video transmitter but with uh, a different camera. Now the Wasp camera is more directed to quad flies I suspect, it's 4-3 aspect ratio, can't change it to 16-9. Uh, but in, in other aspects, it's pretty much the same as the Runcam Phoenix, Runcam Link Phoenix. Let's have a look at some of the specs on the box. Anyway, uh, field of view is diagonal 160, horizontal 127, vertical 92 degrees. Uh, input voltage 7.4 to 26.4 volts. Resolution 720p at 120 frames a second. So um, anyway, it's time to have a look at the bits and pieces. Then we'll have a look at the website then we'll put it together link it up with my goggles the v1 goggles i have it's also compatible with the v2 goggles then we'll pop it on a plane take it out for a fly this was sent to me by banggood for the review link in the description you can also buy it straight from uh, runcam if you want to as well so let's take it out of the box the usual foam padding a little bit of an instruction manual just basic connections as usual. We have all the same connections, red and black uh, for power. White is the RX, grey is the TX, and then you have the ground and signal for the uh, RC control using the DJI controller. Inside we get the antenna with a little connector. Uh, a few mounting screws, no mount as usual these days. Uh, the cable connector there. And here's the camera and video transmitter. We're very familiar with this, same as the Cadex uh, Vista, uh, air unit light. They call it lots of different things, USB-C input. Uh, these are the solder pads we have to solder onto. And there's the antenna connector with a little retaining clip. Here's the little camera, the Wasp Nano. It is very, very small. Uh, as I said, designed for little quads, I would imagine. I usually prefer the bigger cameras, but the thing with these things is that you can swap cameras easily just by undoing the clip and pulling out the connector. But uh, let's test out the Wasp Nano. Quick look at the website now to see what they say. So here's the listing on the Banggood website. At the moment it's $129.99. Uh, flash deal ends in five days. They were actually going to send me this uh, in time for their recent sale, but it didn't get to Australia that quickly of course so uh, now we've got the flash sale on that's a pretty good price that's sort of one of the cheapest HD FPV camera and video transmitters you can get shipping $2.99 to Australia from Hong Kong and what's special about the WASP camera uh, we have 120 frames a second 50 megabits 4.3 aspect ratio low latency here's the camera you can see the dimensions very very small 14 millimeters wide, 12 millimeter lens. Now I'll have a quick look at the manual, Runcam Link Wasp. Uh, there are, there's the uh, wiring diagram there for good quick reference. Uh, now activation and linking with all of these uh, DJI HD FPV units, you need to activate it. Uh, so you download the uh, DJI Assistant 2 at uh, this address here, the FPV version, not the Mavic version, and just follow the prompts to activate it. Now to link the unit to your goggles, you need to power them both up, push the little button on the goggles and they'll start beeping, then push the little button on the unit and the beeping will stop and that means they're paired or linked or whatever. Now for firmware updates or downgrades or whatever, you go to that uh, DJI Assistant again when you're doing these activating and firmware updates, uh, you need to provide cooling to the unit because it overheats very quickly uh, and there's no airflow to keep it cool. You need to power it up with at least 8 volts or 7.4 volts or whatever it is, connect it up to the USB-C to your computer. Uh, so that links it, that allows you to link it up to the uh, DJI Assistant. Then it'll list uh, the firmware versions that are available for it, the latest version and probably the one that uh, it will be loaded onto it is the 010000 version. 
Uh, now, I, my goggles are on the 0606 version, so uh, for compatibility and so that I could do the WTF OS um, full iNav hack, uh, I changed to the 0606 firmware. Although it is listed as available for this unit, it really didn't work. So, And this is the image it gave me looking through the goggles. So it squished only half a screen and obviously something is very wrong. So that uh, 0606 firmware is not compatible with the WASP. So I changed it to the 0608 uh, and that works. That's, that gives me the proper image in the goggles. I do get a message in my goggles saying the firmware isn't the same as the goggles, but you just, just dismiss that and uh, that's all good. Here it is all soldered up and mounted on my standard little 3D printed mount. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. You can print it up yourself if you want. Uh, I've got sort of a cable tie holding the cables there because they're fairly delicate. I have uh, two uh, two pin DuPont connectors, power and the RX and TX. Uh, if I'm not using a flight control board I can just connect up the power uh, to uh, at least 8 volts and in the goggles, my V1 goggles, I would have to turn off temperature control. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about the O3 setup and the avatar or whatever and how you uh, get it out of low power mode. I, I'm not too sure, but that's how you get it out of low power mode in the V1 goggles. So if anyone knows how to do it with the other goggles, um, feel free to leave comments. I think I'm going to mount it on my new scratch-built foam and tape and core plast plane which uh, I'm going to put iNav on it eventually but uh, this is flying pretty well so might as well have some decent FPV on it. iNav board is just mounted up uh, externally I'd probably need to cover that with some sort of cover uh, and it's uh, wires just going back there so anyway let's see how it all goes. We're up and away and how do we look? Looking pretty good. Need more throttle to get it going in front in uh, into the wind. There we're going now. We're at about four or five amps. It's only 3s this one. It's a good view. Very nice. Can chop the prop, and we can glide along the cliff there. Uh, that's pretty cool, but anyway, we'll keep powering up. Feel like I could go 4S. Four three aspect ratio view is a bit different. I'm used to the 16.9 uh, going right out to the corners, but this gives you more up and down view, I guess. But we can cruise around like this. I've got plenty of twins and pushes for FBV planes, but no uh, single motor tractors. So that's that's why I thought I'd try this. It's at ground speed. Not very much. <laughs> We've got a bit of a headwind, but it's just cruising along four amps. It is only three S, so I uh, guess I can use a bit more current. So the view in the camera, it's okay. Uh, it's obviously uh, a small lightweight camera. Never going to be as good as the, the big uh, full-size big lens cameras, but um, maybe actually it seems to be focused closer than out in the distance there. Maybe it needs a refocus. Oh, there we go. Something to be aware of, because that's nice and sharp on the nose, but the island in the background isn't very sharp. but flying nicely. Maintaining altitude. Let's go for a cruise, see what current it's going to draw.
Oh, look at that, I can make the prop stop in the, in the view. That's cool. So I can see quad flyers liking this camera. Um, I probably wouldn't buy it for fixed wing uh, because we tend to like the full 16-9 aspect ratio. It's definitely focused closer, isn't it, and not so much in the distance. So I really do need, a, need to do a refocus of the lens. But anyway, better than analog. You can swap cameras with the link. Whoops, getting a bit slow there. It's a different feel, this camera, this uh, plane. Let's try it on 4S anyway, give us a little bit more grunt, I think. Glide it in. Making a nice, quiet, single tractor motor. All right, cool stuff. So what I want to do now is see how the uh, tail is flexing while I'm flying. Um, I'll be flying line of sight and uh, I'll put it into uh, cruise mode and check out the tail. So here we go. or angle mode at least. Angle. Keeping an eye on the... So, angle. it's not flexing too much. Angle. Angle. Rudder flexes it a bit maybe, but... Uh, angle. No, that's good. I'm happy with that. Angle. Not too bad at all. And this is the view with nothing else on the screen. Angle. Looks weird looking out the back. To Turn to launch. Yeah, I've still got that out of focus on the um, left hand of the screen anyway. You can see it on the wing and on now that you can see the difference between the left wing and the right wing basically. So I wonder what that is. I might have to check it out. So, uh, not too impressed with the little camera, the, the rest of the unit of course is all fine uh, and you can attach different cameras to it, which I'm pretty sure I will be doing. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit short focused, I've adjusted that in the field, maybe I haven't done a very good job of it, I'll play with that a little bit more at home. Uh, but it definitely seems to be out of focus on one side compared to the other. But anyway, there it is, the Runcam Link Wasp Nano. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.